Gangshan was my first area. Um, it's this, it counts as rural. And I, when I was writing on the train and I was talking to my trainer, I asked him, is it rural? Is it city? What's it like? And he said, oh, it's very rural. And I remember we pulled into the station and I looked around and I was like, well, this is a bigger city than anything I've lived in. So um, there, basically Gang, Gangshan has just a strip of tall buildings, um, lots, lots right there. And then outside that, it's just a lot of farmland and um, fishing farms and that, that kind of area. It's a very big uh, factory place. Um, and it's, so it's the northern tip of Kaohsiung, which is an, another area I served in. Um, it was actually in the same stake. But so Ga Kaohsiung is really, really hot. And so I was there for both summers. I was a missionary. And I just remember one day, like, we we went outside, I got on my bike, we rode probably for five minutes, not very fast, just normal pace, and I got off and I realized I was just dripping in sweat. It was so hot. It was very, it was just very humid and it's probably 80, 90 degrees is what it feels like. Oh, that's probably what it was and then with humidity it feels worse. But then the people down there, they have a lot, a lot more time than up north. They're very flexible because they're, they're factory workers, they're farmers, they're, and yes, they're busy. Taiwanese in general like to be busy people. Um, their favorite, their favorite phrase is that they always, um, they always do overtime. That's their biggest excuse. Oh, I can't do that. I always overtime. And so it, it's a Taiwanese culture thing. But down in Kaohsiung, they're a lot more they're a lot more flexible. They have a little bit more time. They, they're a little, they don't leave as fast. They're a lot more willing to stop and talk and figure out what's going on. Um, in Kaohsiung, they'll speak a lot more Taiwanese, which is a dialect off of Chinese. Um, it goes back way back Chinese history, just people from China. They all have different dialects, and one group of people that spoke a certain dialect moved to Taiwan, and so that was the language until China and Japan kind of came along and then eventually they took on Chinese as their official language. Yeah, so Kaohsiung has very Taiwanese, uh, they, they all speak Taiwanese. I mean, the old people only speak Ch Taiwanese, so you can't communicate with them because we learn Chinese and you're told, don't worry about Taiwanese, there's not, there's not a huge population in the world that knows it, there's probably maybe a million people in the entire world that might speak it but not many are even that fluent in it. So it's not something that, like, everyone should be able to understand you okay in Mandarin, and if you need help, you can get members help on the Taiwanese thing, don't. Um, so you'd w run into old people, and they would just stick up their hand, and they'd say in Taiwanese, they'd go, oh, which just means, like, I don't understand, and then you're like, okay, they're not going to speak to me. They don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what they're saying. There's no communication here. So Kaohsiung, um, it also used to, that area used to be a mission itself. There used to there used to be three missions in Taiwan, and Kaohsiung was the third mission. So you get close to the city, and you'll notice the wards are a lot smaller because the churches. That's one of the areas the churches was there for a while. Um, and in my area, Gangshan specifically, each area is associated with a different food, and Gangshan's food was mutton. Whenever I would tell people my first area was Gangshan, they'd ask, oh, have you had Gangshan's mutton? And I'd respond, yep, yes, I have. I love it. It's good. Um, that's just how Taiwanese remember areas. They remember the food. Um, but there's also a ton of places to visit. I mean, in Kaohsiung alone, there's the Gao 85, which is a, it's a skyscraper that's 85 floors. Um, it's, it used to be the tallest until they built the one in Taipei, which is now 101 floors. But it's still really tall. You can see it from um, pretty much anywhere within the city. You can see the Gao 85. There's the Dream Mall, which is, from what I understood, it was the largest mall in Taiwan. It might be southern Taiwan now. Um, it was. It's. It's an interesting shape. It's built like a whale almost. And on the top, they have a theme park, a mini theme park. Nothing too crazy. Just a Ferris wheel and a few small things. Also in Kaohsiung, they have. Uh, I can't pronounce. I can't remember how, what that one was called. It was um, it's it's a Buddhist temple. It has really large statues of Buddha. Really big one. Um, he's probably, ooh, thirty maybe even fifty feet tall. Just 
huge on top of this temple and yeah and there's it's up in the mountains in the middle of nowhere <laughs> there's Shizu one it's an island and it's just off but they've kind of they have a college over there and it's it's really good beach area there i mean we didn't go swimming but we'd go to like put our feet in the water and just hang out at the beach but yeah